Okay, everybody good to go? I'd like to <clears throat> call back to order the regular PIVIS meeting for June 10th. And I'd like to very gratefully recognize that we are collectively on the unceded territory of the Litwat Nation. Um, can I get a motion uh, regarding, sorry, my agenda is very far. <laughs> Uh, can I get a motion regarding uh, section 91E and K of the community charter around electronic meetings? Moved by Councilor, or Director Russ, uh, Mack, seconded by Director Zant. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion approve the agenda as presented. Director Kennett, seconded by Director Zant. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, Now, can I get a motion around the resolution for M192 around COVID-19 electronic meetings? I did that out of order. Moved by Director Zant, seconded by Director Mack. Can you oppose? Motion carries. Would anybody like to pull anything out of the consent agenda? Can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. I just, I just wanted to bring, um, I have some information to share with regard to the staff report on the Permanent District Community Fund. So can we... Do you want me, can we pull that out or do you want to just have a conversation? Uh, let's pull it out. Okay. We'll just put it, uh, where would you like to put it, Kristen? 3.5? Perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else? Move the consent agenda as amended. Director Zant, seconded by Director Mack. All, any opposed? Motion carries. Um, any business arising from the minutes? Seeing none, we're on to 8.1. Uh, CL verbal update, CL Helmer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Nothing today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gilmore, anything from the Village of Pemberton? No, I don't have anything either. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we're on to 8.3, which is uh, around the basketball court report. And we'll wait for some staff to join us. Ms. Burns is being admitted. Good afternoon, Ms. Burns. Thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you for the report um, and the ongoing conversation around our basketball court. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for receiving uh, some more information in regards to the development of an outdoor basketball court in Pemberton. Um, as you are aware, um, in our previous uh, PIVIS meeting on April 8th, um, I presented that there had been some shifts in potential location for said outdoor basketball court. Um, as a result of um, further conversations among staff, it was deemed uh, necessary to pursue potential, um, other potential um, locations. So as we did that, we also engaged um, Crosland Doak um, in creating some professional architectural renderings of what um, those spaces could potentially look like should we make some decisions to move forward with one or the other option. So the first option presented is lot eight on Frontier Street. Um, and there are a few, we've, we've taken the time to identify some advantages and disadvantages. So I would just right. like to express Mr. those. I'm gonna interrupt for two seconds. I'm wondering if everybody's good with the report on the computer or do we need screen sharing for this? Directors, has everybody got their report in front of them or do you need screen sharing? I'm fine with looking at my report. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Rich, go ahead. Yeah, no worries, sorry. Page 24 through 31 um, of the agenda package is where the report is. Um, so it would be page 26 that I will refer to at the moment with advantages and disadvantages for lot eight um, on Frontier Street. So lot eight advantages are that it's an easy site to develop um, with minimal base preparation required, um, improves an underutilized and disturbed site, um, multi-use potential supporting the downtown community barn 
um, easy site access for construction, crime prevention through env environmental design through a community space that's not screened or obstructed. Um, and there's already washroom access nearby. Some disadvantages are that it's not close to the community center for maintenance and security purposes. And it does not centralize activities for youth in a designated community space. And there would be some neighborhood impact, however, a low residential density area. Um, the other option that we uh, proposed last time um, was the Great Lawn um, at Pemberton and District Community Center. Um, and we have some advantages and disadvantages to outline for this as well. Advantages for this are that it's close to the community center um, from a maintenance and security perspective. Um, it centralizes all of the youth activities in a designated community space and it um, activates a underutilized year-round uh, green space. Disadvantages are loss of green space. Um, impacts to even more green, green space during construction. Moderate expense to site prep, removing some organics. Um, impact to existing paved trail that would need to be realigned. Um, higher landscaping and screening costs. Site access for construction is limited and neighborhood impact um, is higher um, due to higher residential density on the west side. Um, we did discuss the potential for Dunduff Park. Um, however, at this time, I think the key point to mention is that prior to adding any more amenities to that site, a recreation master plan needs to be um, engaged in um, so that we ensure we're doing everything we need to out there with the space that is left to develop. Um, we do anticipate that there will be uh, basketball at a, any further, through any further development at Dendoff Park um, as well though, as it is a very popular activity in Pemberton and most areas for that matter. Um, uh, I would like to refer to Appendix A, um, which is on page 30. Um, so this would be the renderings that Crosland designed for um, Frontier, um, Lot 8 on Frontier. And um, as you can see, it would be accessing um, via the existing parking space would be the main entrance to that space and include a nice seating area um, and then the court itself. Um, there would be less landscaping involved um, and there would be hedges around versus um, uh, higher landscaping trees. Um, uh, but it is uh, pro provides some opportunity there um, in relation to events and activities at the community barn. And then if you refer to Appendix B, um, this is where we proposed uh, positioning the court on the current Great Lawn space. Um, as you can see, there would be uh, additional landscaping required in order to try and uh, minimize the impact on the current residential density there. Um, and then beyond that, um, our goal is that you uh, choose one of these options um, as a recommendation to move forward with Pemberton Council. And I am open for questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Burns. <clears throat> Maybe I can just add for the committee a little bit of uh, information around the discussion that's been had around the council table, um, just to inform our discussion. So when this committee uh, directed to move ahead with, or, you know, looking to move ahead with the one on the community center lawn, great lawn. We brought it back to council and um, I think as you know by now, but just to be clear, there was a lot of uh, concern around losing a big chunk of the great lawn, which is a, obviously a pretty valuable community green space and celebration space. Uh, granted, it is <clears throat> sort of on, on one of the less used portions of that lawn for sure, but there was concern around that, and um, and that's one of the reasons we're here. That's one of the reasons Ms. Burns went out and came back with this other option. Um, there And there was some a conversation around the Dendoff Park, well, it should go out there. Uh, at this point, uh, I think representing the PEVIS committee, I said that 
we were looking for an amenity in town, an activity in town where where youth could go <clears throat> and walk and ride to in town as opposed to uh, at the rec center, which as Ms. Burns said, uh, I anticipate we'll have an outdoor court as well one day. Um, so that's sort of the conversation that we've had so far. Council hasn't seen this report. This is something that we've been working on as a PIVAS committee for some time. So we felt it was the right place to have the first next conversation here. Uh, and uh, again, whatever recommendations we come out of here, we'll bring back to council and, and have that conversation. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of that context as well. So with that, is there are there any questions for Ms. Burns regarding either site? Go ahead, Director Mack. Um, I don't know, not questions, but um, the Frontier Street, uh, uh, I like that location. And I also like the design with the hedge and everything. So that minimizes any impact to the residential area. And, and like uh, was stated, um, there's not, it, it's pretty sparse right there. So uh, that's close right in town. It's close to the barn, close to uh, amenities. Uh, I think that's a good site. So anyways, I, uh, I'd like to see that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Director Kennett. Um, my comment is I, I think it's a, a good location. Um, I'm just wondering about future parking issues um, as the community gets bigger and there is some parking issues in the community now with, um, you know, the bigger we get, the more we're, we're, the object is to have a walking community. I get that, but the reality is there's lots of cars in town and everybody's looking for a place to park that's convenient. Um, that's the only impact I think this could maybe have on future parking um, potential uh, in the short term. But I think this is great. And whoever came up with this uh, Frontier Street idea, I think is a great one. I think we should move forward with it and get her done. <laughs> Thank you, Director Kennett. You bring up a good point too around, you, you mentioned parking and it's not just parking. Uh, I anticipate one of the conversations that we'll have at council is that we still haven't gone through an exercise, a visioning exercise for that property, um, which is something we'd like to do for sure, because it's a key little portion of property. I feel like that might be one point of, of concern for some uh, to, to start putting amenities on there. There is lots of interest in that property. Um, the, the men, the senior men have uh, often wanted to put the men's shed out there. The uh, Pemberton Arts Council have asked if that would be a good place for their sort of home base. Maybe it's a combined thing. Uh, it's potential just for really nice green space. And like you say, maybe parking. I'm hopeful that we, you know, with our park and ride and other things that are coming that hopefully we don't need more parking downtown and we could save that more for green space. But point being, Jen, I, I agree with you in that you know, it is a bit of a pause for going to be a bit of a pause for us because we haven't visioned that property yet. And there's a lot of, a lot of interest in it. So um, I got other comments, but I'll leave it at that and keep going around the committee. Uh, Director Zant. Uh, just, I was going to bring up the issue about the uh, you know, coming into summer season when it's hot and people will be playing basketball's RV parking and looking at the picture, I couldn't tell. I mean, it looks all like green area. But does that would that impact on the um, the longer RVs, trucks, and trailers in that area as well? Yeah, maybe. Thanks for that. And, and extension that I see your hand, Ms. Gilmore, when you answered. So when, the way it's positioned it says at the end of existing parking. Yeah. Is that the end of at the end of the existing pavement, or is that because it goes into a little bit of gravel and then it sort of transitions into lawn? So yeah, yeah. Right. What I've been seeing is that the people are the longer vehicles park on the gravel side. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. go. So this is, you know, we've picked a location. We want to make sure that there is RV parking. In fact, we put signs up to make sure that there is the RV park. So there's a paved, there's a little bit of a disturbed area still from when we did the construction of the downtown. Okay. Um, so we would want to make sure that there is enough space that we allow our campers, whatever kinds of larger transport vehicles, if they need to come the early in the morning, whatever happens to be to park. So um, we're able to play around with this somewhat. There is also some additional green space um, further down um, on this lot. The one issue with this, just to address a couple of other comments that have come up, is that 
it's an odd linear shape. And even though the trains aren't running, the setbacks on this particular lot are quite challenging. Um, but that's not to say that we shouldn't continue to plan it. Um, I know with the men's sheds, men's shed and the Arts Council, we are actually exploring maybe um, some other locations to help them, which I think we should continue to do. And maybe even exploring what it looks like for some of the vacant space in the downtown that currently might go underutilized. So we're actively looking at some other locations that we would bring back um, to help those, um, those two groups as well. So it's not completely forgotten. I just wanted to make a couple of um, points to that fact as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Director Zent. If I may, I'm just wondering if, um, I'm sure staff has, but I'm wondering if staff has exhausted all the options with, the, uh, with both school districts. Um, at this time, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. That's, I was just wondering because I know we had looked at the students in the past and just wanted to make sure. Um, and are we only looking at, sorry, uh, Director Richmond, if I may ask another question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Have we only evaluated SLRD and BOP owned land or is there an opportunity here to find somebody who wants to donate a piece of land for the basketball court? I love the way you think, man. <laughs> uh, I'll defer that one to uh, yeah. CAO Gilmore. We haven't explored any additional land, although I do note that, um, not saying that we should not proceed with this, but it appears as though there will be some other amenities um, should the school rezoning for the uh, SD93 come through. So, you know, maybe we work with them on what other amenities if we, we have one downtown. Um, I think it would just, you know, further delay uh, the um, this project. And as much as I think there's some good hearted people in town, the price of real estate right now, as far as land values, I think would be quite challenging. Even if we were to give a charitable tax donation for the mm -hmm. land, I think it would be... Um, challenging for us. Those are just my thoughts. Um, there will be, I mean, no matter where we put it, basketball does have a little bit of noise with comes with it. I hopefully we don't put chain mesh on it because <laughs> that's really loud, but there is a little bit of noise with it. And, and, you know, staff has identified the different impacts of both these spots to residential areas, but Nonetheless, I feel like there will be some concerns around having that. Um, I'm personally fully supportive of having more activities for our kids to do in town, you know, clo close to home. Um, and you look at bigger, bigger towns and bigger cities, these amenities are right in neighborhoods. They're not, you know, we, 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 we don't want to hide them away. And so mm -hmm. to some, it might seem that this is a little front and center, but, you know, we don't want to hide them away. We want to having them right out there in the open, close to home, visible and, uh, and accessible. So I'm, I'm totally happy to support the Frontier Street. Like I say, there will be some conversation around that property, I'm sure at council, but I'm happy to move, move in that direction. So um, unless there are any more comments, would we like a motion to, how, do we, how is it laid out in the report? Um, that the PIVIS committee recommends the Frontier Street location <clears throat> for the outdoor basketball court uh, and that it be referred back to the Village of Pemberton for support. I'll Ooh. make that motion. Seconded by Director <clears throat> Mack, pardon me. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do you need anything more on that? Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Burns. Hopefully we can see this thing on the ground really soon. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye bye. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're on eight point four. Uh, I'm assuming Ms. Le uh, Ms. Le France will be joining us. Good afternoon, Ms. LaFrance. Thank you for joining us. When you're all set up, I will let you uh, present on the first quarter financials. Okay. Hello, PIVIS committee. It's uh, Suzanne LaFrance, Director of Finance at the SLRD. And the first quarter financials are there for your review. There's not a lot that happens in the first quarter, but just to keep things consistent, I always build them up. And it's always easier at the end of the year 
once I've gone through them all quarterly to do the final end of the year review. Um, these are just the SLRD um, financials at this point. The recreation financials will come next month. And I'll bring back the 2106 to 2106 F next month, which I realized 2106 F was missed from the package inadvertently. And I apologize for that, but I'll bring that back next month. Um, the, there's not too much to talk about for, you know, unusual items. There's a, bit, a little bit of time allocation issues, just a little bit high time allocations for certain projects that I've talked to um, the staff about, and there are good reasons for them. Um, nothing too over, like nothing that should be over budget at this point. So I, I haven't uh, flagged anything that way. Um, but I thought I'd just open up the questions to the PIVIS committee um, on these Q1 financials. Thank you. Any questions on the first quarter financials? As you say, they're uh, fairly straightforward and not a lot happens in the first quarter, but it's, it's good to see the report. So thank you for that. If there aren't any questions, can I get a motion to receive the first quarter financials? Motion to receive. Seconder, Director Mack, any discussion? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Mr. France. Enjoy your afternoon. Hey, Kristen, I think I missed number five, didn't I? Did I miss the rise of the report? Or, or are we rising with report a next meeting on the? We, we just, we don't need a motion on that. That will flow through automatically from the closed meeting. So it'll just pop in there in the minutes. Perfect. So that's fine. And then next we have the PDIF report that was pulled out of consent. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Gilmore. Thank you for that. Um, I we've talked about um, under sort of on page twenty one the supply and install of the bear proof uh, garbage bin, and so I thought I need to actively follow up on that. That was a village um, obligation to order that and get it all placed. So it doesn't appear that has been done, but it appears as though we've been able to secure um, some bins free of charge that are in great quality, and so we're going to be placing one there in the next uh, couple of weeks. So we could remove this obligation and commitment from this fund and put it back into uh, wherever it needs to go. We don't actually need the funds anymore. There you go. That doesn't happen all the time. No, I thought it was a good news thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, do we need a motion to redirect those funds or does that just happen naturally? Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Chair. Usually we get a motion to um, make that, put that back into the available funds. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to put the uh, bear proof bin funds back into the general fund. Uh, Director Max, seconded by Director Kennett. Any opposed? Motion carries. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, decision on late business. Late business, we have none. Notice a motion. Motion to adjourn. Director Zant, seconded by director. Nobody wants to adjourn. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor or any opposed, we're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you.